All right, everybody. Hey, it's Mr. K here. Hope you're having a good weekend. This is what teachers do on PD days, some of us. So I hope you're enjoying yours. I'm going to really quickly take you through how to make a scatter plot out of your survey results because the goal is that by the end of this long weekend, you have enough results. So again, we're looking at level four, around 50, fingers crossed. Um, so share those as much as you can, especially with me. Share the surveys. I'll, I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, so once you have that level of results, hopefully by the end of this weekend, you're coming into class Tuesday, and I want you to try making a scatter plot yourself so that we can talk about it on Tuesday. So how do you do that? You're going to go to your Google Drive. You're going to search for your form. It should be easy. It should be one of the most recent things. I uh, shouldn't have to teach you how to search for a form. So we're going to click on our first day survey. I've already got it open on another tab. Here it is. So you'll notice in this survey, it'll take you to the questions. Um, but since you made this survey, you also have a responses tab. So click on the responses tab. And that is really useful because it makes a uh, graph for each question that you had a response for. So here's a question about height. And it's broken it down into a nice graph. Whereas there's other answers here that were word answers, so it just shows the words. But um, one thing you'll notice for this graph, it's a nice pie chart, but it's only one variable. It's a one variable graph. It's just the height. That's it. Different percentages of heights in the class. So, which is fine for your assignment. You'll need one, at least one like that. But what we're really interested in this assignment is two variable graphs. So how are you going to do that? That means you need two data sets, one from one from one question, one from another. So how are you going to do that? You are going to hit this green button. What this green button is going to do is it's going to take you to a spreadsheet where all your data is already there. So beautiful. And it's right here. Great. So um, at the top of this spreadsheet are your questions. Uh, and the results are right below. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to need two rows of data that you're going to one row is going to be your x values and one row is going to be your y values and you're going to make a scatter plot and it's going to be awesome so how are we going to do that we are going to um take one row let's do visual spatial learners and see how people did on that we're going to just copy this data so that's control c or apple c sorry control c or command c or you can just go to the edit menu and press copy after you've highlighted it. So once you've copied that data, go to a new spreadsheet. Go to Drive, make a new spreadsheet. I'm going to delete all this, sorry. This is from the last time I tried making this video. And in this new spreadsheet, you're going to paste that data. There it is. And you're going to put a little title. Was it Visual Spatial? Spatial. Great. So I remember what those numbers mean. Go back to your spreadsheet and let's pick a second row of data. Uh, let's pick do, 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 do. one that might have a relation. Sure, let's go bodily kinesthetic learners. Let's see how close a relation to people who are visual, spatial, and bodily kinesthetic. See if there's some sort of correlation there. Or maybe not. We'll find out. So go to the new spreadsheet. I'm going to paste that one right beside it. And for the title, so I remember it's bodily kin, period. I'm going to highlight both of these, and all I have to do is press insert chart. And look, it's ugh, this is beautiful. It made a title for me. It made a y-axis title. It made an x-axis title. It picked the wrong type of chart, but whatever. We're already rolling. Um, so it turned it into a bar graph, which is useful, but not as useful as a scatter plot, which is what we're really looking for. So you're going to, sorry, um, you'll have this chart editor open to the side. You'll want to go to chart type and push that so it gives you all kinds of options. Scroll down to see all these dots just floating there. Hit those dots floating. And we are rolling. Now we're at scatter plot. Beautiful. So... Why is this useful? Why do we care about scatterplot? What's so great about it? Well, what's great is that we can look to see if there's any correlation. We can look to see, do people who learn with their body also learn with their eyes? 
How do we do that? You're going to go to the Customize tab. And this is where you can do chart styles. So you can change the background color. Let's make it orange because why not? Maximize. What does maximize do? Oh, geez. Do not do maximize. Anyways, change the font title, font, whatever. You can change the access titles if you don't like them. But leave them alone for now. Who cares? What you're really interested in is this one, series. And there's two boxes I really want you to click. First box is trend line because that's going to show you a line of best fit for your data. And what's going to really help after you hit trend line is scroll down a little bit. Uh, let's make that line a little bit thicker because we can. And hit this show R squared button because we're going to be talking about R squared a lot next week. That puts a little R squared value here, which tells me that there's a little bit of a relationship, there's a little bit of correlation. But it's not strong correlation, which we'll talk about what that means next week. You don't have to worry about that. All I'm looking is that you make a chart like this from your data, make it a scatter plot, throw a trend line, and uh, that's that. So hope you have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, and we will talk on Tuesday. So long.